All right, welcome back. This will be the last segment of our show. We're going to do a little quick rapid fire. We're going to try and slay through some dudes here. If you're looking for any more in-depth analysis, be sure to hit us up on Patreon. That's where you can get any of your questions asked. We're about to go do answered, a, a f- answered, asked and answered. Yeah, you have to ask them, then we answer them. Right, but That's you can ask works. them on Patreon, mm-hmm. and you'll definitely get that answer. Um, we're about to do a whole Patreon show exclusively right after this free show. So head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty and uh, get check out that $5 holler. There's already like six and a half hours plus of exclusive content you can't find anywhere else. We did a live stream on Sunday. We answered all the sit start questions our Patreons had. We gave you a little waiver wire additions. Tons so, and tons of stuff. Yeah. Right. And by the time this month is out, that'll be about... 50 cents an hour for what you paid for for your right. uh, $5 for the month. And You're basically buying us a coffee for a bunch of fancy information. Exactly. You buy me a coffee. That's and all it's you got to do. Time. It's a good time over there. And, and, and I've said this before. It really takes you longer to get your credit card and type it into Patreon than what it's the $5 is going to hurt you. It's a good time over there. And we had one of our guys hit us up the other day and said, thanks so much for helping me out with my Jarek McKinnon trade. We talked to one of our guys out of drop and he had a short bench league and he had already had his IR spot filled up. He only had two spots and it was filled up with guys that you couldn't drop and or wouldn't have wanted to. And we got it. He traded Jarek McKinnon for a second instead of dropping him. That wasn't even part of his question. We were like, no, just trade him for a second. If you can't hang yeah. on to him, all that good stuff. And just little things like that just your sounding board you're you know hit us up we'll, we'll yeah. be happy to help out i mean basically we're trying to build a buddy system here like we were very fortunate between the three of us to be able to like we mentioned earlier sit around here on sundays and watch five tvs and talk about whatever and and when we have uh, we're not playing each other obviously in those leagues um we can answer each other's questions. Hey, what do you think about this? Hey, should I make this trade? It's just nice to be able to have somebody to bounce things off of. And we realize knowledgeable, right? We realize everyone doesn't have that situation and we're trying to be that guy. And for, you know, we're there for you, right? For your pleasure. I literally just had a trade go through and we were talking about it and we're going to get, we're going to bring that lot. That trade just happened to me 30 minutes ago. We're going to talk about that in the Patreon show to come up in case he disagreed with the trade. And that's, that's just how it goes. And that's what we want to be here for you to get. If you want to say, hey, I'm thinking about doing this trade or this trade's been offered to me, that's what we want to be to help you out with on Patreon in addition to getting, you know, extra show and all that good stuff. All right, Slay Wayne, slay some guys. All right, well, let's uh, let's get into this little bit of rapid fire. How much time you got, buddy? Not much. We'll see how quick this will actually go. Um, these are just some bullet points. I'm sure we can all chime in. Um, I think from week one observations, any any rookie wide receiver that's your favorite, go send out an offer for him because everybody's rookie wide receiver's value just dropped because nobody did anything week one. I would be down to go try and put an offer in on any of your favorite dudes. I think that's a fair point, and one one of the reasons why you know multiple times over multiple seasons we tell you that we will hammer rookie running backs because they pay dividends. You know, usually quicker. a little quicker. I don't mind when guys like a Corey Davis or something that like that, where I feel very strongly about his ability, come around and, sure. and being able to stab at those guys in the first round or whatever. But for the most part, I might take a running back who I maybe don't love quite as much as the receiver over him because it's just you could get dividends a lot quicker. Um, so again, week one, not super surprising. A la Royce Freeman and carry on Johnson love that's come around right. in the last couple months over some of those other receivers. And then here you go. Week one, nothing happens for the receivers. And now that running backs are popular. Yeah, it's out there for everybody. But two years ago, we were right. over here telling you about these running backs and how they 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 make you the they make you the champs. Yeah. All right. Um, looking at some box scores and some games. Kareem Hunt got you less than five PPR points. So I know you're bummed about Kareem Hunt. Right. Uh, he it, still touched the ball 16 times, and this is the first game he ever didn't have a catch in. I'd be willing to go. I'd be down to try and go buy some cheaper Kareem Hunt coming off of a bad week here. Well, and I'll, I'll piggyback that with uh, Leonard Fournette as well, because I think both of those guys are guys who are people are either very in or very out on, and you may have just got them on your team because they were the guy left. Right. And maybe somebody's already like, well, see, I told you so. This I, the, the, 
they're they, not any good. He's not any good or he's hurt or what, you know, whatever. But this is, you know, you're not going to be able to buy him for peanuts, obviously, the Fournette and the Hunt. No, but for sure. You could definitely send some things. And if and instead of just getting the automatic reject that you're getting for Joe Mixon, you might actually get some sort of a response. Well, there's two that, well, yes and yes. But the, I love both of these guys, so you're Leonard, not getting them Leonard from Fournette me. Leonard Fournette has the injury thing, and Kareem Hunt just has the, they just blew out, they just put up 38 points, and he only got four, four points, 4.9 PPR points. But the thing about it is, only one guy out. Everybody on the Chiefs team had one catch, except right. for Sammy Watkins had three, and then Tyreek Hill had seven. Right for a buck sixty nine and a punt Kelsey return. Kelsey killed you. And Ke- yeah, Kelsey killed you too. So like in a game where the Chiefs it's a punt up, return and a, two huge plays from Tyreek. That's my, my, exactly what I was about to say. Like you get your first possession taken away from you by Tyreek Hill's punt return for to the house to start the game, and then I think it was maybe the very next, re- maybe maybe two possessions later Tyreek takes the slant or the deep deep cross boom hit him in stride outruns everybody to the house so like throws up the deuces you know what can you do offensively it's like you yeah you put up 38 points and you're like looking around for the fantasy points but Tyreek Hill got them all right you know so and that's I'm not, not going to happen every week I, I would definitely put out a flyer on somebody looking to to, to back off Kareem Hunt a little bit because I'm just like Jay Wayne said never had not had a catch before it's not like spencer ware came in there and gobbled up seven targets right he caught one you know what i mean yeah. nobody did anything outside of tyreek hill that's it right right all right let's move on another guy in the same exact scenario well not quite he had a better game than kareem hunt had but we got dalvin cook who only got you 13 and a half ppr points a lot of people were down on him coming into the initial start of this season because Latavius Murray earned more carries and he's coming off this injury and he's not going to see as much. They're going to split carries and all this. Well, I'm here to tell you he played 80% of the snaps this week. He had 16 carries and was it five targets? He had seven targets for caught six of them for 55 yards. Right. So I, this is another guy who could have had a much bigger day. I love seeing the work load. Second on the team in targets. Right. Second on the team in yardage. And played receiving of the snap. So it's only going up for the Vikings offense. Uh, you didn't see a ton from them in the preseason. You didn't see anything from Dalvin Cook in the preseason. Right. I guess he carried the ball like once Niners or twice. Niners defense, possibly a better against the run than some people thought. Underrated Absolutely. for sure. Um, um, Latavius Murray played fine in this game. He got 11 carries for 42 yards. He, he played well. Um, but, but Dalvin, it was all Dalvin Cook to right, get going, right? And they opened up, and the and the Forty ers kind of made a little bit of a comeback. They opened it up on them for a minute. The Vikings being yeah. the Vikings, and you, Dalvin fumbled twice. As your Dalvin ownership going into the first week, it was all you could hear was Latavius split the load, Latavius yeah. goal line, Latavius. So you had Latvius, to, Latvius, Latvius, Latvius. everything you heard was fifty fifty. And to start that game, it was eighty twenty. Right, and that's and all then you on need top to of see. that, you saw the crazy usage in the passing game, which I don't think is going anywhere. Right, no. And, and he had a huge. That's run. the cherry on top for me. And he fumbled it. Yeah, and so thirteen points, like that's a terrible game almost for him. Right, right. which is Good why I'm you. saying go send out some feelers. And then when you watch the game, it doesn't really look like thirteen. When you were watching that game, it didn't seem like he had thirteen points. He played better than. Right, point total, like I thought. right. Oh, yeah. If there's any, yeah, yeah. If there's any slight hiccup in a Dalvin Cook owner's mind, be ready to pounce on that. Do you can't it. make the trade if you don't make the offer, people. Sure. So this next guy on our list is is a bit of a question: Are you selling? Or are you holding Randall Cobb? He had crushed it for nine, caught nine of ten targets for 142 yards. Obviously, that huge 75 yard touchdown reception to win the game. Aaron Rodgers dealing with a knee injury. You got Cobb for cheap. Are you, are you cashing the register here? Or are you selling? I'm you kinda, buying. I'm kind of torn on this because you're obviously a, you're not buying. You're holding or selling. Well, you, you can't. I don't. Nobody's going to. I'm not the buying guy on this end of this spectrum of Randall right. Cobb here. So that's right. out. Well, but um, with the 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 Aaron Rodgers injury is the thing that that would make me want to maybe explore selling. Randall Cobb because a he hasn't been the healthiest guy and without Rodgers we've seen this charade before there's one guy that kind of did the did his thing and maybe the Cobb would be the guy who did his thing in here but I don't know if I'm willing to you know roll that dice I just think that you got him for so cheap that I would be okay with riding this out if Aaron Rodgers was healthy so but yeah well there yeah I think I'm willing to sell 
if somebody's think, willing to buy. But I don't know what the I don't think the market's going to bear much. If if Aaron Rodgers can go without getting further hurt, I think the quick ball coming out is a very good thing for, sure. for Randall Cobb. You That's saw you saw the second half targets for Randall Cobb spike. Obviously, he takes one to the house from far away. That'll give you PPR points right there. That'll get you fantasy point fantasy points in any league. But the thing about the buy sell on 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 Randall Cobb right now that makes this kind of an unusual situation. You don't like we just said you don't buy guys after thirty and 30, 40 point weeks, but the Randall Cobb owner was shaking in his boots last week. Right, a lot oh, of people getting, may have not even started him. No, oh, oh, definitely on some benches for sure. But he was also like, oh my god, he's about to get cut or traded away from yeah. Aaron Rodgers. Oh my god, and now. So it's an unusual situation because not a lot of guys are about to get traded slash maybe that's the cut about to be cut sign and then they get 30 points. So there actually could be a buy low on on Randall Cobb because it's higher than they thought they were going to get. And I know that sounds funky, but if you, you see what I'm saying, like if, a week ago, you couldn't have got anything from Randall Cobb because he was about to get traded away from Aaron Rodgers and you don't even know. Yeah, he's always been nicked up. He's always been hurt. But when he's in there, he's one of my favorite guys. To, if if Aaron Rodgers and, and, and Randall Cobb are healthy together, they make fantasy magic. Yeah. So And they did it again this week. And they might do it again next week. And then they might one of them might get hurt or, or worse. You yeah. know, So it's a slippery slope with Randall Cobb. For, it is a, it, I know it's supposed to be fast. So if I got him... I'm trying to put him in my lineup as long as it ha- as it as it helps. I doubt anybody's going to give me anything for That's him. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that, that I don't was think kind of gonna, my. I don't think the market's going to bear very much. I don't even think though you're going to be. Able to get, it, I think yeah. people are. It's one week and people are going to be nobody's like, yeah, gonna, I don't yeah. want anything. No, yeah. I'm not like I'm not going to give you. I'll keep my. I'll keep your third, and I'll just keep putting him in my lineup. Exactly. Nobody's going to give anything for him, but at the same time, if I feel like I need some PPR points, that it's on a roller coaster and it may go down as fast as it came up, I'd give up a third to put Randall Cobb in my roster for a couple of weeks. Or maybe the rest, of, you don't know how long before he gets yeah, hurt. I'm out on buying him. I could buy him for cheap. I mean, I guess for a third. I don't think anyone's going to give him to you for a third after he just put up a 30 burger. But That's what maybe, I'm saying. Maybe I mean, it does. It, I don't think it would happen with anybody else that scored to put those, that amount of points. But just last week, they didn't think, they thought it was a sinking ship. Fair yeah. enough. That's fair. Um, I'd be down to hold or or maybe buy for a third. I mean, I, I, I'd hold. Let's see what happens. I mean, it's Aaron Rodgers Huckleberry. maybe maybe holding on by a string with his health. That's that's why I'm concerned. Yeah, that's, he didn't that's look fair. right at the end of that game, and it just takes one. You're already would out, you, out you, on collarbone, you, Aaron Rodgers, let alone hanging on by a thread knee, Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> <laughs> and about to play the Vikings bad knee. <laughs> yeah, like you Are can't you, start uh, him. Yeah. Would you would you trade him away for a third? No. I, I, right. I, just, I just said like I can't trade him away because I'm just going to roster him until the wheels. It's going to be one of these deals where I got to roster it till the wheels fall off, and then just be like, well, it's a good run with Cobb again. Right. 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 All right. Uh, let's move on to another guy who, let's see, his team already put two other wide receivers on IR in Trey Quinn and Cam Sims. Not that they were making a huge impact. Jamison Crowder was a guy we would all we all had our eye on in the preseason. He picked up some groin injury, and we were all con- didn't kinda, see him a lot. Kind of concerned about that. Didn't look like him, deja vu, right? And then he gets out there and he plays in Week One, and he looks healthy, which right. I think is the main point to take away. Looked healthy. He ran around. Looked good. The Redskins didn't need to do anything in this game. They had a hold of it. 21 points, second quarter. They did what they did. The defense was manhandling the other team's offense, the the Cardinals' offense. Uh, P, uh, AP looked good. Uh, and they just they didn't really need to do too, too much. Don't get, don't get too crazy. I mean, I don't have the box score in front of me. But, I mean, I don't think anybody caught more than a couple balls outside of when they needed something. It was Chris Thompson. And they either handed it to him I and he, he, he did some most. stuff. He had six catches. I think that was the most on the team. Jordan Reed had four, and it really wasn't a whole lot after that. It was a couple to uh, Paulie, and Paul called a couple, and, and, and Crowder didn't catch many. Crowder caught three. P. Rich, I think, had six targets, but didn't have that many. Uh, but like you said, they did. They came out and exploded on the Cardinals, and we knew the Cardinals were going to have some some issues with the lack of weapons right. outside of outside of the main two guys with DJ and, and Larry and that that's ex- precisely what happened and and Casey has been leading the charge on this all off season long about how the Redskins are a lot better than people think they are right and they they had some really they really got a decent offensive line they got a they good had, front seven that's exactly they had a really tough de- they had a really really tough deal with injuries last year and they came they came into this game a lot healthier than they were than they have been and they beat them up and then you saw it like Jordan Reed disappeared after uh, in the second half they didn't need him and 
And one of the things that they came hoodooed us with Chris Thompson saying that he wasn't oh, right, and then now he looks great that's, again. That's my that's he my, hoodooed us. He that's said I, he doesn't right. feel good. That's my biggest like. I guess in a, even in a dynasty format, we did say earlier in the off season like long term hold didn't go with Chris Thompson, and I stand by that. So in my dynasty startup this year. I wasn't going to pay what they paid for him anyway, so I don't regret that part. But recently, actually, we put out the video of an auction that we did, and Chris Thompson went for six bucks. And when his name come up, I was like, ah, whatever, you know. And I feel bad. I feel like we could have got him for seven dollars. We missed the boat and redraft for we, sure. We missed the boat and redraft because yes, he said I'm not going to be right. And I, that was I really hung on that. If the dude is personally doubting himself, I just didn't see it. Coming. I didn't. I didn't like it either. But he that the redraft thing we should have got on because it's so it was he was he was too cheap number one in redraft and when he's out on the field and healthy he's been awesome and you just ride that wave as long as you can ride it and you find some other option because when he's in there in your redraft or your dynasty right now like you're you're probably winning ball games you're happy to start him right and Absolutely. I definitely missed on that one. So buy low on Crowder. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> He's healthy. They didn't have to do too much. I think moving forward he'll he'll be a lot better uh in your lineup than three for thirty. Absolutely. Uh let's move on to the Seahawks. Tyler Lockett had a fifty one yard touchdown uh catch. Didn't do a ton outside of that. Brandon Marshall saw six targets, caught four of which of them uh which which of these two guys would you rather have moving forward, Tyler Lockett or Brandon Marshall? Well, this is easy in a dynasty to say. Well, Brandon Marshall's thirty four years old, but let me just say I'd rather have Brandon Marshall in my lineup next week. Right. I'd like I like the Tyler I like the Tyler Lockett story. I like he got a gruesome knee injury and he came back last year and everybody said he wasn't any good at football anymore and he just came back from having his leg torn off. And now this year, week one, he breaks behind a defense and makes him look like Tyler behind, Lockett again. Got behind Chris Harris. That's what I'm saying. Like I, I would much rather the have did Chris Harris. You, you can't, you can't want Brandon Marshall more than Tyler Lockett in Dynasty because B Marsh is, you know, he's he's retireable. He's 34, but he didn't look 34. No, he looks spry. That's exactly oh, why wow. I told you a couple weeks ago that when I heard one of the nation, you know, one of the the biggest guys in the industry called him so washed, completely and he's terrible. He said a lot of people were saying that. He for said no, ridiculous. Forget, they said forget about Aaron forget about b marsh and i came right on here and said hey man this is not you can't forget about b marsh he's a he's an absolute stud and that thing some people get hurt he was beat up in new york and the whole team quit last year yeah it just wasn't right he comes in he looks good week one he catches a touchdown had another one call back for penalty it was yeah. his offensive pass interference he pushed off on a guy but i would i would i would feel really good with b marsh in my lineup next yeah. week. yeah you move your lips like a bunch of gibberish people think that you forgot about <laughs> or B Marsh, whatever you want to do. That's an Eminem song. Way back in the day, Big yeah, Coda's going to rap, but I ain't going to get that one. Forgot about B Marsh. <laughs> this is what I. Anyhow. <laughs> There's a bunch of gibberish. <laughs> Mother. Act like they forgot about B Marsh. <laughs> I, I agree with you. I, I, I want B Marsh in my lineup next week. Tyler Lockett was too cheap in a lot of Dynasty startups to pass up on, so. We do. We I, we did acquire him in in a couple of leagues. We got some locket. Oh, and some like fifth round rookie draft and, pickup. And the fact of the matter is, is again, B Marsh probably got cut off of a lot of teams last year, so he was waiver wire material in this first go round. So probably not Tyler Lockett though. I would say Tyler Lockett was probably not a, he's, he's, or as that, much on the waiver wire as B Marsh. So the pickup for B Marsh and the startability of B Marsh in dynasty is, is awesome right now. I think it is because Tyler Lockett's not on any of my six. What is it? Seven, six or seven FFPC leagues, which are 20 man rosters with including a kicker defense and quarterback at all times. Like, so that's 17 players at a at a max. So uh, you, we have Tyler Lockett and FFC. No, no, he's not on any waiver wires. Oh, oh. And did oh, I say right. he's not on my team? I think so. I thought you did, but well, if I say, he's on some of our teams, he's not on any waiver wires. And B Marsh is. And last yeah. week we told you about B Marsh. You, you could have got him for free. And I think this year, this week, you're still going to get him for really, really cheap. Right. There's probably some people who are still not. And with believers. Doug, Doug, did we, did anybody did did I, did I space out? Did we say that? Did you say anything about the hurt? best receiver on the team's Doug hurt Baldwin. with the knee. Doug we Baldwin's out for a couple of weeks. Like, did, did that even come out? Because that's huge. Right. huge. Well, it's understood when you bring up these other guys. I mean, obviously we were – if you've listened to this show, we've been huge proponents of Doug Baldwin for years now. And we tried to stand fast with his left knee injury throughout the preseason. 
saying that you know we're still down with taking an 85 90 percent doug baldwin because he's still a value no matter what how you ring it up then he goes and picks up a right knee injury in this first game he's going to be out at least probably overcompensating yeah right that's what i thought as soon as it happened like a guy with a big truck um (laughs) (laughs) uh, or surfboard or whatever you want to call it uh but Maybe they just have small waves with the he's, surfboard. He's going to have two to two to four week injury timetable. Obviously, the Seahawks came out and said it's only going to be two weeks, but they always lie about injuries. So it's it's probably going to be longer than two weeks, at least two weeks. So in the immediate future, B Marsh and Tyler Lockett, I think, are solid plays in your lineup. And, and B Marsh is probably a guy you could pick up for, on the cheap. And I'd be a proponent of that because he definitely did not look like a 34-year-old wide receiver. And if you were listening to Patreon, I believe it was last episode, I, I gave you a little Will Disley. So. Yep. And Ooh. some B-Marsh. Yeah. All Anyhow. Right. Well, real quick, let's just sum up the uh, Jets offense. Sam Darnold's definitely going to the Hall of Fame, right? Give him yeah, the, give him the gr- sure. Give, give him the gold, gold jacket. jacket. <laughs> give him the gold jacket. I want to say green jacket, but this isn't the Masters. Nope. Um, obviously, they them boys came out and stopped the Lions. We're going to get into the Lions here in a second. We're going to talk about Galladay and Marvin Jones being left for dead, what to do with Galladay, what to pay for him. Talk about this Lions offense in general on the Patreon show amongst the uh, Broncos backfield situation with Lindsey and Royce Freeman, amongst many other listener questions that they have. We're going to we're going to answer all those on, on the, the Patreon show. So be sure to get your five dollar holler in as soon as you can to but become I'm, part of that family and get those questions answered. Absolutely. It's notable. Robbie Anderson had one catch, forty-one yards, and a touchdown. He, you could t- you could see him getting frustrated throughout that game because he wasn't getting targeted, and he was getting open, and he was open, and Darnold wasn't looking his way, and then he finally threw it up, lobbed it up. wasn't the best throw. Robbie made a a, a great catch on that yeah. touchdown catch. Solid for your Robbie Anderson stock. I thought Bilal Powell and Crowell looked pretty solid obviously Crowell had a huge day. From I thought both of them looked like they were coming out there, and they looked extremely quick. And they look like they were very powerful, ready to finish every run and being elusive. They just obviously it's the Lions defense didn't look great in general. But both of those running backs, I thought, looked really good in this. They just look both of them look shot out of a cannon and they were finishing a lot of runs with power. And I, I liked what I saw from from Crowell and, and Powell here. Yeah, maybe if you were in the building, the nail was in the coffin already. But watching on TV that Crow, when Crowell took the corner and took it down the sidelines, that was a nail in the coffin. Obviously, you hadn't, you didn't think Crowell was that fast. I'm a Lions fan, and they just they took they took our pants off in public. They <laughs> they took our pants off, pointed at the skinny dick, and laughed. <laughs> skinny, <laughs> you drive a big truck with a diesel engine. You got a small dick with the jacked up truck. Big Co drives plenty of diesel trucks. There's nothing wrong with the diesel, unless you don't need it. Well, you always need it. You don't know that you need it until you get it, and then you're like, "Oh, this is way better." Than well, actually if you're pull, if you're pulling equipment, it's yeah. way better than burning. I'm gas. all for the diesel. If not, yeah, get out of here. Yeah. And if you got your truck jacked up, if you use it jacked up, like what, I, like how, like off roading? Like, yeah, going okay. mud. Well, that's fine. I mean, I grew up going mud, and I was a the best mud and driver in our town. <laughs> Course, you're a, mu- you're a mudder. I was a mudder. I was a mudder. We had this pipeline that can, at the edge of my property, and after school and co- after high school, we'd have all these mud and trucks lined up, and we'd all go out in the country and ride up and down this pipeline in the mud, and people would get stuck. And the we'd, mudding pipeline. Well, these boys would get their trucks jacked up with new tires, and then they'd ask the, me to drive it through the pipeline for them. And I'm like, go get your own truck stuck. This is like this is like pipeline at Hawaii, but this is cam <laughs> pipeline in Hawaii and Camden, South Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of jacked up, when I read that Quincy Inunua only had 10 targets, I was like, whoa, it seemed like way more, right? He was the offense. So That's, That was Sammy Hall of Famer's go-to. Almost, ha- almost half of uh, HOF Sam, almost half of his targets went to Quincy. He had a 48% target share, <laughs> which is massive. We've been on this guy for so long, whether you go back two years on SoundCloud or... Even just days uh, last off season, we told you to pick up Quincy Inunua. We we we're like, he's cheap, he's good. Pick no him reason up. not to have him. Right. Cheap and good, love those. And then we told you this off season in our uh, our draft, our our auction, or it was the uh, mock draft startup. We we're like, you got to you got to take Quincy. There's no reason not to take Quincy. And then he hurt his back. Um, I guess that was before this off season, right? He hurt his back. Last off season, we were before on him. Before then, I just want to do some. I'm, I'm, I'm not nailing this bat packing here. 
Uh, but <laughs> you're doing a really bad on, job of saying how great you are. We've been on Quincy for a long time, and we didn't let the back injury slash neck injury fall f- falter us. Uh, we we were on him again this off season, and he was just catching everything out there. Balls behind him, off target throws. He was taking shots over the middle, holding on to it. He was just getting bludgeon with targets and well old it was Sammy a, safety blanket a, it was a neck injury which that, that that glows in red but that's when we were doing the mock startups and we kept taking quincy and noon while late because he was there late right and it's like i don't care if his neck falls off first week we didn't you're not paying anything for him right now right but and you then, had to get him on your but team you're supposed to get him when he's free and he was free in your startups this year and i'm talking like 15th 16th 17th round and if he has no neck, you're okay. You replace him. But guess what? He's got a neck. And he's got 20 PPR right. points for you. And Sam Hoff Darnold, he <laughs> is That's going, an abbreviation for Hall of Fame. Right? Way to put it out there. He's going to keep pumping these targets to in well, Noonwa. This, this offense, this Jeremy Bates offense, is a lot of short, quick throws. A new one fits right into the there. The beauty He's of it built is like, a, got like a, a running back and or tight end with great hands. All of those. And you got, Big body. You got two capable running backs stress, stressing the defense out. And you got Robbie Anderson, who's one of the fastest wide receivers right. in the now, league. No, who no, can actually catch? No Jermaine Curse in this contest, who was their leading receiver, I believe, last year. And they still have Pryor out there, who's a big, big fella. Yeah, but um, it, Curse is three for forty nine. Huh? Curse, Curse, Curse is not going to come in there and take away from the Nunwa wide receiver slash tight end combo. Nah. Like a Nunwa is the middle of the field. Like Curse is good. Curse and Curse was actually very underrated for what he did last year. I thought he was, but I I think if anything, a Nunwa keeps his tar. Uh, it's not going to be forty eight percent every game, right? But it sure is. It could be more targets going around, right. and he still gets his ten. And Sam Sam Darnold only had like twenty one attempts, but to to his credit, the defense scored. Right, they took possessions away from the offense. And by the last the last fifteen minutes of the game, there needed to be no targets. Right, and so with Quincy, he's just that big body in the middle of the field, crushing contested catches, yards after the catch. He's just always open. He's got that, so that late that separation. He ran ran around, tucked his way into the end zone, reached it out, got the looked ve- I swear, unstoppable. I, I he was texted, not going to be denied. I texted Casey as soon as that happened, and I was like, I can't believe how quick he looked. He's like, he's huge, sturdy, thick man. That's why he's playing the tight end combination here, and he can be across the middle and take hits from linebackers. But then when he caught that ball and he had a step, he took it, and he was he got in the end zone, not like most two hundred twenty five, two hundred thirty right. pound men. Huge, sturdy. And thick, just like my dad. <laughs> yeah, skinny. <laughs> Jay Wayne has a big old jacked up Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> it's not jacked up. Skinny, it came like that. Skinny, skinny wiener. Skinny. <laughs> it is bright yellow though. <laughs> it's because I'm happy. <laughs> All right. Well, we I'm were gonna get into some. Bad. We were gonna get into some lines here uh, right before our patri- transition Let's into Patreon. Take into Patreon. But we're already we're out deep of into this thing. We're out, out of time. time. Just so close up shop here. Thanks for listening, everyone. If you want to, we're about to. We're just getting rolling here. If you can tell, we're about to kick it over to the Patreon. We show. already got a pipeline mudding story in. <laughs> Gets better. Just primed up, big, thick, and hard. Just like <laughs> whoa, whoa. We should have Quincy Noonwa's catching ago. ability, uh, physique. We're on any of your platforms of choice. Podbean, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio. Most importantly, iTunes. Please go on to iTunes and go hit that review tab and give us a little five-star tap. You don't have to write anything you can if you'd like. It's always entertaining hearing from you guys. And thank you to everyone that's already done so. If you, don't, if you listen to the show and you like what you're hearing, please go on to YouTube and just hit subscribe for us. Just let us get that little subscription, even if you're not listening to videos. But we've been doing some live streams, which have been Patreon exclusive only, but we might make some of them public. So anytime we go live publicly on YouTube, you'll get a notification if you're subscribed. So just another, show. another reason to do that. Um, if you're looking for some more content you can't find anywhere else, go over to Patreon. Give us that $5 holler. Patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty. The FF Dynasty.com. Has a, a link straight to there from our homepage as well. And if you're not in, if you're not ready to pull out 
the, the, the credit card and buy us a coffee for all this awesome information we're giving you, you can head over to our website, theffdynasty.com slash community. We have a forum set up there, and you can ask any of your questions you want on there and get interaction from other people in the family, and we try to stay active on there as well. So that's another avenue for you to pursue to get some interaction with us. Hit us up on Twitter at the FF Dynasty, at IMC Myers, at Dynasty Big Co., at J Wayne's World. Till next time, you've been listening to the FF Dynasties Married to the Game. Mm. All the syllables.